Good afternoon, everyone, and it's a Friday. <laughs> I can't believe we're almost over in October. Um, and I know this week will be lots of October half-term breaks. So thank you so much. We've got still got a great audience in terms of, I think there's just under 100 people um, tuning in. So thank you so much for joining the Firefish Crowdcast. Delighted to be joined with uh, Claire Mohammed today. Thank you for joining us. I'm um, really keen to hear what you've got to say because you have got at least a couple of decades there of being a business performance coach from the recruitment market. And you've really been helping a lot of companies, independent recruitment owners, scaling their business. And I think we were just chatting there is one of the biggest sort of themes, um, you know, recently that you've been saying is retention. And it's really helping all of the, the companies that are hiring hugely just now is keep the good candidate or keep their good recruiters and looking at how we onboard those new recruiters as well. So I'm really interested to dive into some of that. But the concept or the, or the topic that we're looking at um, is evolving around sales and business development strategy. Um, so, you know, ultimately what we're seeing here is it's a really, really busy market and you could be, um, you know, you could you could just decide that we don't need any business development right now because we've got loads of jobs. <laughs> you know, is, is that how we should be? Is that what we should be saying? Should we still be thinking about our business development strategy right now, Claire? I think it's easy, isn't it, to park it at the moment and just to say, you know what, I can just put that over here because got so many different roles and so many different things that I need to deliver on that it's something that can wait um, and I think you know I think when it comes to BD a lot of the challenge is timing and yeah. I'm not talking about the time of day or the time or you know what day of the week is the best day but more about the timing of when your need is for the outcomes of BD um, and I think people kind of really set to and get motivated don't we all um, about BD when we need the outcomes you know when we can see like right in front of us that our pipeline is drying up and we haven't got there and we're looking at you know what's coming in in the next you know this month next month and then we start to panic a little bit yeah. and that's what happens you know it, it, people get a little bit desperate and then you, you add a bit of stress into the mix and <laughs> the next thing is people are getting really transactional any boundaries around what kind of business that they're saying yes to tends to get eroded and the next thing is you're, you're saying yes to business which isn't really any good the terms aren't great might not be as much commitment there um and people jump into that bd activity and they get busy and start trying to chase some business rather than having a plan and isn't that correct because you know one of the biggest sort of um challenges that a business owner sort of always talks to us about as well if they're not running a contract or temp um, book is it that you know their month days are always like this and they've got one month's great one month's not so great so trying to forecast and think about your business plan going forward becomes yeah. really challenging so let's look at it there in terms of right you know we've got to try and keep a constant of that business development even in a job rich marketplace so what sort of where do people start what sort of activities should we be doing you've got to have a you've just got to have a clear view of the kind of business that you want. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the best things that anyone has ever said to me, and it's like whenever I find myself jumping into stuff and getting overly busy, it's kind of like just stop, like begin with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. Stephen Covey said it, not me. It wasn't wasn't my my words, but it's so true because we've got to just stop, just pause, and just think about like what am I trying to do. Yeah. You know, and when we say about BD, what we're trying to do, you know, we say, well, get jobs on, make place, of course. But we're trying to avoid the whole, like, busy fool situation. Um, and I think if you can think, just take a little bit of stuff and go, hang on, what, what type of clients do I don't want to work with? What, what will they need from me? Mm -hmm. So not what I want from them, what are they going to need from me? You know, think about what kind of working relationship you want or partnership. Is it going to be embedded? Is it going to be retained? Is it going to be exclusive, outsourced, project delivery? Whatever it might be. And think about the businesses that you want to work with. Why will they want to work with you? Is it a certain type of project or is it a particular type of situation that they come in that needs that, you know, that drives that hiring need? Um, or is it that you solve a particular problem around a skill? Because then you can work out a plan to build um, the relationship with those people and the credibility that you need to work with them as well. Yeah, because it becomes easier to find them then if you know what you're looking for, doesn't it? It does. Yeah. Yeah. And you start everything, your conversation starts to change, your mess messaging starts to change when you're thinking about what problems you're solving, what situation they're in. 
why they would want to work with you in a certain way because you're not thinking about I need to get jobs on. Mm -hmm. You're thinking about what conversations can I have? Mm -hmm. What relationships can I build? And I think that's huge. Yeah. And we don't, we don't always have that luxury and I think we've got that right now. And that's why it's a brilliant time to do it as well. So let's look at it in terms of the companies you've been working with and, and the recruiters that you've been helping, you know, what sort of conversations and types of conversations are you encouraging them to have with that that, um, that person? Yeah, I, I mean, I think some of the, the best conversations that you can have with people um, are, I mean, it, it's not just the conversations that you have when you, when you actually engage, it's how they get to know you beforehand. Okay, that's really and good, I, yeah. Yeah, I think there's a huge amount there. Um, you know, there's, uh, there's been so many conversations around personal brand and, and everything else. Just put the, put the tactics to one side, you know, about how many times you post a week and so on. And just put all of that to one side for a second and just think about, what again, what you're trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we need to build credibility. So it's how can you demonstrate credibility with people? Um, you know, and there's lots of brilliant ways that people are doing this. They're sharing white papers. They're creating white papers. They're, um, they're building communities. And when I say communities, this could be a Facebook group, mm -hmm. you know, or a Slack channel, or it can be really simple stuff. Um, you know, and they're having conversations about what they're doing, who they're helping, and more importantly, they're helping people. Mm -hmm. And that is the critical bit. And then on the relationships bit, it's about how do you get known to people before they um, before they need to work with you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's why it's a, it's a good time because you can carve out time now to, to get to events, especially now, fingers crossed, um, with how things are, are with, with COVID. But, you know, we're at a time now when we can get out and meet people. Mm -hmm. You know, there are events face-to-face. -face. We were talking earlier on about, you know, the expo and, you know, I was up in Manchester. We're getting face-to-face -face with people. And I think if you can commit to things that can get you in front of people, either face to face or in line or through content, it's going to hold you in great stead. And, and that's great because I'm just about to ask you, so is this all down to the phone? And you've just answered that is no, it's yeah. thinking about different things and different sort of tactics that people are deploying. Have you got some more yeah. examples of sort of going out and getting out into networks, into events again? Have you got other things that, that people have been doing that have been successful? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, there's the more of the content piece. And, and I think sometimes there are little, people are a little bit frightened because they don't know where to start with it. Mm -hmm. um, but it can just simply be joining a community or event and starting to have those conversations with people. Um, and I think we still want to be mindful of, you know, seeing the opportunity that's right in front of us there and then. You know, right now, obviously, again, if you don't need me to tell you this, it's the kind of driven market, you know. Mm -hmm candidates are, have got so much opportunity put in front of them in terms of people are coming to them regularly about opportunity. Um, wouldn't it make sense to be the recruiter who is creating all of that opportunity? Because you're not going to stop candidates getting multiple opportunities right now. But what you can be is the recruiter that creates all of that multiple opportunity and that's going to help with your placement conversion. So things that you can do right now is if you've got a candidate that is you know, solving a particular problem for companies um, that has a particular skill set, that's bringing a particular expertise, is really be that recruiter who understands and be candidate-led where that candidate will be interested to go and be that recruiter who creates that opportunity. Would I pick up the phone to chase a lead right now? To be honest, if I haven't got a relationship with client, I probably wouldn't. Um, that's not to say I wouldn't pick up the phone because I'm a huge advocate for, for phone conversations. I probably, based on how the market is right now, I'd be prioritizing and I'd be sending a hyper-personalized message, maybe a voice note, which is great for engaging people. And then I'd offer to have a conversation to see if I can help, but I'm not going to go all in in trying to reach people, trying to reach people, trying to reach people, when actually I think I'd probably refocus my time a bit better. And I think that brings it back to where you started the conversation is that right now, you know, it's not hard to get a job on, right? So yeah. that gives us this breathing space to really be quite strategic with our business development strategy and select the clients that you want to be doing work with. So I think that's where you're saying is, no, I would really come in and focus on the ones but make it very personal because essentially this is your opportunity to really get into the companies that you have always wanted to get into because they will have a need. They will. They will have a need. They will be 
open to, and you can take any of the pressure off yourself because there is more opportunity and really start to experiment a little bit with how you do it. <laughs> if I think about where where my business has been coming from recently, um, yeah. it's been um, through building audience. And what I mean by audience is me having a consistent conversation with the people that I want to do business with um, and then coming back to see me again. Um, you know, and that might be me sharing insight, sharing opinion, um, helping people, making them laugh. Oh my God, mm -hmm. I spoke with one person this week and they said to me, they went, um, well, you know, when I, I first started following you, right? And I was like, no. And they said, it was the video. And as soon as they said the video, I knew exactly what they were talking about. So <laughs> last, year, last year, I was doing a Facebook Live in a community, the l and for professionals in recruitment. And I hit a button and this mask came on and suddenly like, I had crowns on, I had cat face and I was weird <laughs> and I, d I just tried desperately to stop it and I couldn't. Anyway, I shared this video and she said, when I saw that, I, you know, I, I just started following you from there on in. And then reference like some of the less kind of silly stuff. But you know, you never know who's, when you're putting stuff out there to an audience, you never know who's going to be watching and you're building your own seeds for the long term. Claire, that's how I found you. You know, you yeah. impressed me with a post on LinkedIn that was a really good insight post. And I'm always looking for great, credible speakers and people that I think have got something to say um, and some great background behind, um, you know, what they're saying on LinkedIn. It's not you can't just shout and you don't actually have a background <laughs> to get on the show. Um, and that's exactly what I saw. You came up in my feed and I was really impressed with your take on and it was specifically around sort of business development in this um, in this period of time. Now, I didn't know you. I hadn't been introduced you to, to any. One. And it was just through your content that I decided to reach out and say, hey, I'd love to chat further because I think you've got something to offer our audience. It works, doesn't it? Yeah, it does. And it is. It's about that credibility and reputation and people getting to see your face and know who you are and what, what you are behind it. And I think that's the bit that people start, people buy differently now. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a different buying process than what, it, you know, it's evolved so much over the past you know I think five years particularly but you know 10 15 20 years and there is you know that's not to say certain things aren't really effective in terms of reaching people with urgency yeah we're going to pick up the phone when we yeah. want to actually have a discussion we're going to pick up the phone when we want to have a conversation we want to run through particular things and, and be able to have a two-way dialogue that's when we're going to pick up the phone but there is so much opportunity now to get in front of people before they're even ready to buy, yeah, for them to get to know you. And this is for candidates as well. It's not just a client scenario. Well, clients and candidates, same thing, right? So let's talk about that then, because you said that candidates are like clients have now thought about different ways of buying or hiring and approaching you. And there's definitely been an overwhelming sort of change in the market I've seen with recruiters recognising that there's a different way to approach business development as well. But are the owners of the businesses there? You know, you're working with owners of companies generally around sort of one to 80 man organizations and it's sort of still um, entrepreneurial led businesses. You know, are they still just get people on the phones? Are they open to creating teams now that are allowed that freedom in order to sort of build up different audiences and different de developments yeah. or tactics? I think that there are. There are definitely great businesses that are open to that. And there are some businesses that are, you know, who are... Um, sticking with what they know and what works best and i think that's absolutely fine as well i think one of the um and recruiter you know as a recruiter you know this anyway because one of the advantages you have over your client when it comes to recruiting for them is that you've got that wider view of the market you've got that helicopter view and you get a bit better visibility of what different businesses are doing um what candidates want because you're you're getting their experiences from different types of environments what excites them why they might be leaving all of those things whereas a client has a very limited when you're in an organization you've got a very limited view and that was the same for me when before i worked for myself i could see the company that i worked in and it was a very it was a fantastic view it was a very concentrated view but it was just one view and i think one of the things that i really appreciate now is being able to see right across the recruitment industry and you can see that there is a huge opportunity for recruiters to find and work within a business that lends itself to how they want to work to as well. 
I think you can really do your homework and find a good fit there because there are some businesses that are doing um, phenomenally well with you know a very kind of um, contemporary approach when it comes to content, audience building, communities, um, those kind of things. But there are also businesses doing phenomenally well having a very more, if you like, traditional approach of, you know, um, high volume of calls and let's not get distracted apart from our sales activity. So yeah. you, you can find a good fit for you, whatever that might be. And I think that's really important for business owners these days as well, because just like when a recruiter is thinking about their approach to business development and looking at the end person that they want to be working with, um, it's very it's exactly the same, isn't it, for a business owner to decide what sort of recruiters do I want to employ and making sure I've got the recruiter that wants to work in that way too, because that must be coming in a lot of in terms of the work that you've been doing in terms of onboarding new recruiters and also retaining the the, 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 the good recruiters for those companies as well and a lot of that is probably around how they want to operate within that firm yeah i think so it's how they want to operate and where their real um their strengths are and i think this is the thing isn't it is we've typically and traditionally been quite client organ employer uh, employer organization led yeah and we've been very mindful of well if somebody comes into a role this is the way it, it, the rules were quite defined, you know, they were very rich, much more rigid around hours, around job content in terms of activities, what we're doing on the day to day, uh, around management style, um, environment, what makes the culture, what the rewards and centers should be, all of those things. And I think things have started to shift significantly now with regards to what does work look like for employers and for people. And I think that's where recruiters can really start to shift as well themselves as a recruiter. So, you know, typically they would have been focused on like, my client needs this, the clients, can, you know, can you get a job spec over to me? And they'd be working very, very tight to the client need around skills, around experience and how they were actually going about sourcing that. Whereas I think now if you turn the whole thing on its head a little bit, um, because the truth is there, there are not as many candidates and what I mean by that is people that want to be considered for a role right now. There's lots of people in roles, mm -hmm. but they're not necessarily ready to apply to be a candidate in a process. There's lots of people that can be tempted. And the opportunity, I think, right now is to become much more focused around what, what would be tempting to future employees, the candidates. Yeah. You know, they, they want to be tempted. And that's why I think things have repositioned and, re, and, and moved as well. Yeah, it's really looking at those candidate preferences and taking mm -hmm. note rather than trying to control the candidate in terms of where they'll place them. It's actually looking at where do you want to work and making that great match. And right. that's actually, as a good recruiter, is what they should be doing in the first place anyway. Yeah, absolutely. And it's always been that challenge, hasn't it? Because, you know, our, our <coughs> revenue is generated through client invoicing. Yeah. Of candidates are caught, you know, and we're we're you know we're targeted, we're rewarded, we're measured. Our our ranking is quite often around billings and revenue. So of course we're going to lend to, you know, being a bit more client led and client serving. However, the dynamics have shifted, and it's not to yeah. say, okay, client, Mr. Client, we're not that bothered about you anymore. It's it is that we're just going to be, you know we're going to be very mindful to what what how does that impact the candidates that we're working with? You know, candidates. Are so in tune to the market right now, mm. and again, this one I think people buy differently now. Of course, they are because we've got so much more information around how things work at our fingertips, on our screens, on our phones, whatever it might be. Um, and, you know, and they're very, very aware. People are very aware about how the market is, and they know it's hot, but they want to know. They are open to being tempted, and they are definitely open to open to being courted as well. Who wouldn't be? If someone wants to tell you how great you are, how in demand you are how much, you know, how much more you could potentially offer them. They're going to entertain it. Of course they are. <laughs> it depends on how you approach it. So in terms of that, because you've brought up your candidates sort of approach to business development as well, if you have got these good candidates coming in, what do you think that the recruiter's expectation, how should they be dealing with that in a business development sort of focus? Um, 
tell me that ask me that again so if you've got those good candidates coming in so if you've got a limited number of candidates and these 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 candidates do want to be tempted okay yeah and earlier in the conversation you had mentioned that you know the candidates is also a great source of business development yeah yeah so if you've got a great candidate coming in just thinking about a recruiter listening to our show just now you know where would you be encouraging how would you be encouraging that recruiter to deal with that candidate with all the different opportunities that they could get to, to tempt them um i think there's there's a whole different um sequence of events really isn't that i think i think you have to kind of be very mindful about where the candidate is Mm-hmm. Um, where their thinking is and how they're thinking about the market and what a potential move might might be. Um, and I think it's just about having a, a, an initial conversation with them about what something might look like, not necessarily right now, but in the future. And just being mindful that your timeline might not be their timeline. That's that's just so important. Um, you know, and being comfortable with that. Mm-hmm. It's okay if the timing isn't up for that candidate because there will be other candidates. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think if you can come at it where you just more, show more of an interest from a longer term relationship perspective. And what I mean by this is not just keeping touch calls. I mean, when I say relationship, I mean in comparison to transactional. So transactional is when you're engaging with the candidate and it's about, you know, the opportunity for you, the opportunity to get more CVs out, the opportunity to find out names, the opportunity to build your pipeline, the opportunity for revenue billings. The relationship side is when you're thinking about, okay, so what would this person want going forward? Mm-hmm. What can I put in front of them that would be really quite interesting to them that maybe they would want in the future or didn't think was possible until a later on down the line type of time and having those conversations with them and just being totally at ease that it could be today you have this conversation, it could be next week, it could be in six months. The other big difference as well, um, I think with candidates and um, what's happening is it really is not a one-off conversation. It's a conversation and then another conversation and then another conversation. Um, and I think we, when there's an abundance of available candidates, there's a tendency to, okay, you're not right right now. Okay, you're, <laughs> it's over. This conversation is gone. I, it was, we're so over it and you move on to the next whereas actually you just have to be you have to engage them a little bit more and if you get that so to come back into the BD part if, if you get that trust and that engagement with somebody or when you get it they're much more open to where else they might want to go yeah and what that might look like and could you approach because actually a candidate doesn't want to have to engage with just like a client doesn't really yeah. they don't want to do it they want to have to engage with multiple people yeah and I think I think just mm-hmm. listening to what you're saying there it gets me sort of quite excited about a different way of actually thinking about you know business development in a job rich market because you're talking about you've got a number of different brands that you're representing now and in the future now if mm-hmm. you were to go to clients and actually say these are the type of candidates I am always attracting I would like to be able to represent your brand and I will build up a talent pool for your brand that becomes valuable and that becomes something that a brand would pay for in order for you yeah. to constantly be looking at people that you're nurturing for that can for that client, not now, but in the future. Completely. And it's that piece, isn't it, as well, which again comes back to that helicopter view that you've got as a recruiter, is that if you can share that insight with your clients around, and it's not like kind of a very generic stuff, but, you know, in the market, in this particular area that you're focused in, you know, with these kind of t- candidates who have this kind of skill, this is the work that's really exciting to them. This is the bit that makes a difference to them. You know, um, is give that insight to your clients because mm-hmm. they can use that to develop a better attraction stra- strategy. Exactly. Um, and when I say that, I'm, I'm talking about the, their EVP, their employer brand, yeah. you know, which the more that they can articulate their employer brand, the better it is for you as a recruiter because you can take that that story, that conversation, those seven points, those USPs to market and talk about it mm-hmm. rather than trying to make up a list of, you know, bullet points on a job yeah. site. Similarly, if you know why people are leaving the market, you can advise your clients of that and help them with a retention strategy as mm-hmm. to why, what will people stay, what will keep them maybe. 
And and we know what, what what's keeping people staying because they're accepting counter offers left, right, and centre. Yeah. And it may be money, but it, it's a whole host of other things as well. Yeah. And you've got that information to do something with, which I think is a huge opportunity. And and very, very valuable. Yeah. Um and I think Claire, that's been brilliant because I'm just um sort of looking at um, you know, summarising a lot of the um the conversation there because essentially you know, we've come in at this conversation about business development. We've touched on the phone as a tool, but actually the whole conversation is about looking at reading the marketplace and different ways to match skills and demand. Because that's really where, that's the business that we're in and how you package that up in terms of developing different areas of value. And, and so many times I think that our recruitment marketplace isn't just maximizing the value that they can play in that supply chain. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's the thing, and that's the thing, you know, coming full circle back to BD, but is that we tend to focus in the moment of what I need right now. Yeah. And if there was things that you're going to take away, I'd say, you know, there is an opportunity to take that step back and rather than work in the day to day business development, to spend some time thinking about, well, what could it look like? And to join up the dots that you see across the market and to spot the patterns and to spot the trends and to think about, what's actually happening and how can you use that to be more effective as a recruiter and to really change from being this busy person with activities to somebody that is creating a huge amount of value for your clients and your candidates. That's awesome. I really, I really like that sort of thought process. So just in certain terms of summary and coming to sort of end of the show, um, I'm looking at your three tips, so your takeaways for our listeners today. Um, what what do you think would be um, our listeners to start tomorrow and just look at things differently? What would be your three sort of top tips? Okay. Um, tip the first. Okay, number one. Um, <laughs> I think I would identify just one way, one approach that you can take that will allow you to have a regular conversation with the people that you want to do business with and something that you can do consistently. So, I mean, that might be that maybe you've got clarity about who you want to, who you want to do business with and, and what that looks like. Um, and if you're not sure, feel free to message me and, and I'll have a, a little well, bit. I, I know Andrew will be popping in your LinkedIn connection yeah, um, and making sure that you, everybody yeah. can get in contact with you. And I'm happy to give you a bit of focus there. But <laughs> you tend to find one way to do it. So maybe you're totally comfortable creating content, you know, whether that's video or maybe you're, you're really advanced with podcasts. Maybe if you're not there and that's absolutely fine. It could be that you just commit to going to one event per month or mm -hmm. you join a community mm -hmm. of where your target people are. And, you you know, that gives you a chance just to lurk a little bit, actually observe and see how the dynamics work. And then just start adding into the conversations, help, helping, not selling, you know, helping. And the more you do that, the better. Mm -hmm. I think definitely see how you can do that because that will really inspire, I think. Um, I think... One of the things that you can really do right now, and it's it's candidate led, but it's it's really focused around it will help you with your business development, is revisit your messaging to candidates. So whether that's the job adverts you write, the LinkedIn messages that you write, the posts that you do, and just revisit it and look at it through the lens of a candidate. And the way that you can do this, you can cross out every single I, every single we, every single my client. Just cross it out. Mm -hmm. Quite vicious with it. Get a get a permanent black sharpie on there, and then highlight every single way that you are doing something for the candidate. So whether it's what's in it for them, what's in it for them, exactly. and just take stock of what you know, print it off, do it, do it mm -hmm. quite, make it quite visual so you can start to see where you're learning because that will give you a visibility of where you are right now, and you can start to do that. Um, Third thing, I think I would start to write down what you're observing in the market in terms of trends, of yeah. how people are behaving and why. Because you've got this, you just don't take the time to do it. Mm -hmm. um, or there isn't the time to do it. Um, and just start to take note of that and start to step out of the day-to-day -day of your business and into what's happening in the market overall. Because I think that will be quite revealing to you about 
what conversations you can start. I was just about to say, that's your conversations. That's what people are really interested. That's the first thing I said to you. What are you seeing in the market right now? What are, you know, what, what's everybody looking for? And you said it's really yeah. retention of great people and onboarding new, you know? So yeah, exactly, exactly. Claire, that's been awesome. And I know that everybody will have got a lot of tips from that. And I really like that sort of get the Sharpie out and get rid of all the I's, the we's and the companies and my <laughs> and everything else and think about it from their perspective. We all could do that. And, um, you know, that that's something that I know that, um, yeah, we can all take over and, and make a big difference in a short period of time. Thank you so much for joining us. Okay. Um, I really, really enjoyed that. And I know that a lot of other people will. As I said, I think um, Andrew's just been posting up there in terms of your LinkedIn connection. That's the best way to get contact with you. Yes, please. Yes, yeah. perfect. It's where we are, isn't it? <laughs> Excellent. Yeah, no, that's perfect. Um, so fire that on. And, and, and I think you're open to anybody sort of contacting you and just having a chat with yeah. them as well. So thank you for doing that. Um, and, you know, I'm sure as the market starts to change in about six months time, I'm sure we'll be doing something different. We'd love to have you back on the show as well. So thank you for joining us. And to all my listeners, have a brilliant weekend. Thank you for joining us as well. We'll be back next month. Um, and uh, I look forward to seeing you all again. So thank you. See you again. Bye-bye.